Hello fellows, welcome back to yet another episode of Train Z Simulator, Train Z 2019. Today we'll be looking at another product from Trains Forge. This is a uh, store product and a fictional locomotive, another fictional locomotive. You will, most of you will probably recall I did a video earlier on of the 460s for the Minnesota Northern, another fictional pack that they offer. Uh, today we'll be looking at the 482s, mountain classes that they offer. Uh, I believe these are based on the Western Pacific uh, exposition pack that they put out a while back. If I'm not mistaken, these locomotives look very close to those. So I believe that is the core locomotive prototype. It's a, a Western Pacific model, but not dead certain so don't quote me on that but uh yeah fictional locomotives for a fictional route or a fictional railroad uh so there's nothing really to say historically because they technically didn't exist but uh really good looking locomotives overall before i uh before I make a big mistake though, let me boink, hop over here, boom boom, hop over here, boom. That way that can get out of the way. So, for the pack you will get two locomotives. You will get an early and a late. Early? Late? Uh, with a handful of uh, design changes for the late model. And then you will also get a, a handful of mail cars, as that is the particular train that these are assigned to per their story. That these locomotives were popular to have pulled is a, a mail train. Numbers 40 and 41 per their story. So you'll get a handful of these custom done up box cars and mail cars and such for the train and then you will also need a freeware pack from uh, from their website as well uh, freeware box car packs if you wish to use the consist the pre-made consist oh, so stick this caboose here at the end it doesn't the caboose doesn't come with the uh, with this pack, the caboose comes with the 460 that I did earlier on. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, fun locomotive. I, uh, I'm already a little bit partial to the 482s. I find the, uh, I find the mountain class locomotives to be very, uh, aesthetically appealing. Very good looking locomotives overall, so. A little bit biased, but these are really quite nice locomotives, so. Let's go over our uh, differences between each locomotive. So, our early model, we've got a high mounted headlight, a steam operated bell right in the center, spoked drivers, which I'm kind of partial to. I think the spoke drivers are prettier, but uh, spoke drivers, different lettering. Kind of an entertaining feature is a bell on the tender here. Speaking of you know, the 460. And yeah. I believe that's about it that's actually changed. So we go over to the late here, we've got disc drivers, our headlights mounted in the center, the bell overhanging with the uh, number boards braced up on the front and yeah that's about it number or the, uh, the letters are bigger big block letters yeah uh, I do believe that they use the same sounds if I'm not mistaken we can change our train class. I did go through these. I, uh, so as far as options go, both locomotives have the same options. You can change your train class, extra following section. 
So it'll add the uh, the, no, the uh, flags, and it'll change the color of the marker lights. And then let's see what can I? We got smoke box door, engineers windows. Fireman's windows, engineer's wind deflector, pop out that little window right there. Same on the fireman's side, and then the roof hatches. Open the uh, open the sliders up on the roof. And our whistle. Not half bad. Not half bad. Our bell, which does operate. And I do believe, yeah, these have a custom cab for those of you that enjoy operating in the cab. I've said it before and probably say it for every other train video I do. I really don't. I can't testify much to the cabs. I don't like running in the cab on trains. Trains to me is more of a model railroad simulator, which is technically its original intent, but I, just, I find trains doesn't run as well in the cab as other simulators do, so it does have a custom cab that is functional for those of you that enjoy it, which looks to be pretty well done. Custom cab. We'll take it up and down this little section of track right here. <laughs> really good looking overall. I think personally I would have added the uh, the white pin striping on the wheels and the footboards and such, but yeah, that's just me. I'm a sucker for white stripes. Really smooth locomotive. It looks really good. So there's the early. We'll hop over to the late. As I said, the late has the same uh, options. So train number doesn't get to change. I don't know why that one pops up, but uh, class, which again, marker era and uh, flags. Smoke box door, uh, windows, wind deflectors, roof hatches. So those change. Oh, I did. I did 100% forget about something. The late locomotives get an air horn. See, we don't have one over here. I did. I knew there was a little a walk that I was forgetting. The late locomotives get an air horn. The air horn. I. Hmm. The sound is not bad. The end loop. Yeah, the end loop sometimes plays. Sometimes it plays, sometimes it just cuts off, so it's it's alright. The sound itself is pretty nice, just the uh, the cutting off part is eh. Same bell. Bell does operate. So 
Same whistle. Same cab. Do do do. That and take it down the tracks a little bit. I love their lighting. The lighting actually looks really good on most of Trains Forges products. A nice yellow, not overpowering. Their number boards look really good too, their uh, builder's plate and such. Overall, they really are pretty good looking locomotives. The numbering looks pretty good. The lettering is a little bit blurry whenever you get up on it. As you can see, it's kind of kind of blurred out. Not too noticeable. Typically, you're not up that close in any of your views, so it's not such an issue. Lettering looks real crispy. Everything looks really good overall. As I said, I can't really uh, can't really attest to its historical accuracy. As uh, well, technically these aren't real locomotives, so. And uh, unfortunately, I don't have the Western Pacific pack to uh, compare the actual historical locomotive. Kind of like I did with the uh, the two six twos. The uh, the two six twos, though, you get the option that they did. They you can uh, you can just buy the pack and you'll get you know, all the fictional and the base real life model. But I don't believe. Actually, I think maybe you can. If you do details yeah so you can't open the doors on the box cars or on the uh, the baggage cars there's nothing inside unfortunately but you can't open and close them that's kind of neat can do that with this one boom sure can Look at there. <coughs> can open the box car doors. The cars look pretty good. They are... They're not quite as... detailed as the locomotives is. Like you can see the rivets are... Uh, Photoshop textures. Photoshop pictured textures rather than... Like on the locomotive here where our, uh, our rivets are actual individual details so they're not as I believe on this car yeah so this baggage car they are uh, individual details on the the Harriman style car the round roof the uh, rivets are flat textures and then on the box cars the rivets are flat but not bad. Boom, boom, boom. I believe, yeah, I believe these are the only cars that come with the locomotive. And then these box cars back here, these are the ones that are part of the freeware pack. That uh is used for the consists, which we yeah. had. The doors open on these two, so pretty neat. Boogie, 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 boogie. This <laughs> this is too cool. So for those of you that don't know, steam locomotives 
out west would oftentimes get an air horn, especially for long distance travel, because uh, the railroads were putting in an effort to save as much steam as possible, because out in the deserts of uh, places like New Mexico, Arizona, California, West Texas, places like that where uh, water sources are few and far between, you want to conserve as much water as you physically can. So, uh, you didn't want to be wasting steam on anything whatsoever that might be considered unnecessary or maybe not necessarily unnecessary but undesirable so uh, a lot of over-the-road steam locomotives that had to go any sort of distance would get air horns fitted to them air horns would uh, well obviously you're not using any steam to blow your whistle so therefore you're not using any water up all your water's going straight to the boiler and for your uh, power so Just a neat little tidbit. It's kind of entertaining that they've added it onto this model. It's uh, it's a detail I've seen on a good many locomotives added to trains, but all too often is not functional. Like, you know, we've got a bunch of GS4s. There's a couple people that have done the GS4s and other GS series locomotives from the Southern Pacific for those that don't know those that's the ever famous daylight locomotive but uh those have air horns and i don't think any of them have functional air horns as far as models go i don't think any of the models in trains have functional air horns and i know there's a couple others that uh that came with air horns that don't have functional air horns. They're just kind of an object placed on. But, uh, so yeah, it's kind of neat to see that one added on. But really nice looking locomotive. Really nice running. I'd say it looks really good. I love the overall look of a 482. There's a little pop there where the uh, where the m middle tune of your whistle loop kicks over, <laughs> which can be a little bit annoying, but uh, it is what it is. There's a great many models on trains that have that issue that unfortunately we can't really get rid of. I know a handful of K and L products are stuck with that issue. As soon as we get out on this uh, more straight shot here, I'll uh, put our throttle all the way to full and see what happens. See how fast we go. Let's see what the top speed of this uh, model is, just under the DCC throttle. Interesting. Uh, yeah, interesting little uh, little deal with trains there. Don't have to wait on the uh, don't have to wait on the twisty bridge. So what are we doing? We're doing seventy mile an hour. To say the <laughs> the high speed chuff sounds are. Interesting. Not a fan. I I won't lie. I'm not a fan. Now, realistically speaking, there's not a lot of models in trains that are meant to be up at really past 40 miles an hour. As I said, trains is more geared towards a model railroad, so realistically speaking, you're not going very fast at any of your scenes. 
So right about there is where our uh, where our chuff sounds are decent. So at the 90% throttle, we're doing about 57 mile an hour. Right there, the uh, the chuff sounds are bearable. Above that, though, they sound terrible. Not gonna lie. But, yeah, I don't know what else I can say about it. Not a whole, whole lot. Like I said, there's no history really to tell about it. So just looking over the locomotive itself. Overall, a really good locomotive. I do enjoy it. I do enjoy it. I do kind of get a kick out of the uh, the triangles added to the center of the driver. Kind of reminiscent of uh, Southern Pacific. Southern Pacific could stick the star right there. So that's kind of kind of entertaining, but really good looking locomotive. I do recommend going and checking it out. As always, the link will be in the description. And that's really about it. That's about all I can say to it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Ah, look at that. That's kind of something interesting. Got some steam coming from our... Uh, coming from our uh, baggage cars. But anywho, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I will see you guys next time.